What's the good word, y'all? It's your boy DKB here. So come September 11th, our week one game versus the Buffalo Bills, it, it's the Garrett Wilson show. Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson will start their saga to become the best wide receiver quarterback duo in the NFL. And I would say there's a lot of data uh, and, and just a lot of, um, I would say, common sense when you take a look at the, the New York Jets offense. We have a lot of weapons, but... In theory, the offense receiving-wise will move through Garrett Wilson. Rushing-wise, it'll move through Brees Hall. And if we can get an effective balance going between the two, um, it's going to be very hard to stop. But when you want to talk about Aaron Rodgers' propensity to throw, on average, you know, 33 passes uh, a game per season, things look very good for Garrett Wilson. I mean, we just broke down, again, his numbers uh, that Aaron Rodgers had for this preseason uh, or the offseason as a whole in regards to training camp with us. And even missing two weeks, Garrett Wilson was far and away the most targeted wide receiver. Um, and I think based on what we're going to talk about here, that will reflect very well. So Aaron Rodgers, two MVP seasons back to back. When we want to compare what went very well there versus what we have now uh, and why the same formula that the Packers made work for those two MVP seasons will probably be what the New York just replicated, which was basically a heavy dose of Devontae Adams uh, and everybody else became core role players. They were all be they were all basically able to get put in situations that they can take advantage of nine times out of ten because Devontae Adams was so overwhelmingly good and efficient in what he was doing and based on what we've seen early that is going to be the case with Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson so let's talk about it weapons that Aaron Rodgers had as a Packer during those two MVP seasons Devontae Adams would equal our Garrett Wilson I would say purely based on history and of course Devontae Adams being a top receiver in the NFL uh, the nod goes to him uh, Aaron Jones would equal our Brees Hall. Based on Brees Hall's injury history, I would give the nod to Aaron Jones. Uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling would equal Adam Lazard. And I would say if you match up what each player on the uh, wide receiver hierarchy um, would have done, Alan Lazard has the nod. And what I mean by that is if MVS at certain points was their number two or number three receiver, uh, when Alan Lazard got to that position, he produced better than what MVS would have. Um, so I would say that uh, production leans towards Alan Lazard. Uh, Robert Tanyan, their tight end, would equate to our Tyler Conklin. Um, I would say that we have the clear edge there. I mean, realistically, even if you match them up against CJ, I would say that we have the edge. Uh, Robert was one of those guys that came out of nowhere that uh, Aaron Rodgers was able to turn into a highly productive player, uh, as he generally does. Um, Alan Lazard as a Packer would equate to our Miko Hartman. I would say Alan Lazard as a Packer has the edge. Miko Hartman had a very solid rookie season and then everything else between how he's been utilized and of course the injury history just hasn't gone well in his favor. So at least with Alan Lazard being on the field, um, him producing, him continuing to evolve within their offense, uh, I think that is a clear mismatch for Alan Lazard. Jamal Williams with equal our Dalvin Cook. I would say we have the clear edge there. One of the best one-two punches on paper in the NFL at the moment uh, in the running back room. And then Mercedes Lewis, their tight end, we equate our CJ Uzama. And as mentioned, I would give us the edge. Uh, Mercedes Lewis, a beast as a blocking tight end, offered some sneaky good receiving production. But um, yeah, I, I don't think we're talking about a nearly the same tight end room as what uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to be walking into. So you're talking, uh, what, seven of the top weapons um, Aaron Rodgers would have been used to. And the New York Jets have the edge on four of those positions, right? Two tight ends and at various points, two wide receivers that I would call an improvement based on what he's had. So I would say on paper, everybody, you know, is arguable, but majority of the people would probably lean towards this offense and skill players that the New York Jets have assembled is better and deeper than anything that Aaron Rodgers has had in recent memory to work with. And that's considering he put up two MVP seasons. So. Uh, what does this ultimately mean? Now, as mentioned, Devontae Adams dominated the target share <laughs> when he was with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Uh, he had, over the course of those two MVP seasons, 445 targets uh, in 42 games, something like that. Um, basically had 10.6 targets 
a game, the next highest receiver on that list ended up being running back Aaron Jones with 196. In terms of it being a receiver, it was Marquez Valdez-Scantling uh, with 174. So uh, <laughs> Devontae Adams essentially became two or three players worth of production um, with Aaron Rodgers. He trusted him that much. He was that much of a weapon. And, of course, they never truly gave Aaron Rodgers another um suitable boundary weapon uh, to help him out. He ended up having a lot of guys that were very effective in their roles, as mentioned, um, but that's because Devontae Adams was so elite. If we were talking about Adams being maybe just an average, uh, you know, a number one wide receiver, but maybe just an average one, one that puts up just about a thousand yards a season, maybe he flirts with double digit touchdowns, um, that offense looks completely different. So drawing a lot of double coverage, triple coverage, allowing the run game to go out there and flourish, um, allowing a lot of one-on-one -on -one possibilities for guys like Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who's a bit of a burner, um, Robert Tanyan is sneaking there as a red zone threat, uh, Jamal Williams, red zone threat, um, and then Alan Lazard, of course, his one-on-one -on -one scenarios as the big body chain mover. We have a very similar situation brewing here. So um, very excited about what it could be right now. This is essentially the New York Jets offense, right? We have once Corey Davis left, we have a number of guys that look like role players, right? If you want to be very realistic with the situation, Garrett Wilson's a superstar. Alan Lazard, role player. Um uh, Randall Cobb, role player, aging, uh, very good slot receiver, but aging slot receiver. Miko Hartman, technically just a gadget guy right now until we see how he's utilized and if he can take advantage, um, but a burner. Um, and then you're talking, da, 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 that's our top four. After that, things get iffy. Will we t uh, pick up two undrafted free agents? Um, will we look to the waiver wire? Will Alex Erickson be our fifth guy as the veteran? Who knows? Uh, in the running back room, two star running backs, both coming off major injuries, but most, uh, both some of the most dominant running backs that we've seen in the game in recent memory, at least in the sample sizes that we've seen. Uh, those numbers skewed to Davin Cook just because, of course, uh, you know, Brees Hall is just coming off his rookie year. Um, now, the expected uh, target plan that was laid out that I've seen from X Factor. Garrett Wilson, following this uh, template that Green Bay has laid out before, he would have about 175 targets, which isn't a significant increase uh, from what we saw last year, where I think he had 164 targets, uh, wasn't really utilized in the, the first game of the season. And I want to say he missed a game or two, could be off on that, but either way, not a huge increase. Um, but definitely noteworthy considering the next top target is Tyler Conklin, 85, Bruce Hall with 80, Alan Lazar with 70. So ultimately, you look at the same thing, right? Garrett Wilson becomes a superstar. He will elevate to the upper echelons of the wide receiver ranks. Brees Hall will come in as a very effective and underrated receiving threat in the passing game. Uh, had about four targets a game last year, I believe it was. Looked pretty good when he was able to go out there and make some things happen with his shiftiness and power. Um, Alan Lazard, don't love his role. He bumps up as the number two wide receiver. Uh, Iffy-ish hands, um, definitely a chain mover still and a, a sneaky guy to attack the deep field. Um, but he kind of strikes me as like a big tight end. He's like the reverse Lawrence Cager, right? If Lawrence Cager would have stayed at tight end, I got a feeling he would be very similar to an Alan Lazard. Um, so don't love the game or the role he will potentially fill, um, but it is what it is. Randall Cobb, <laughs> again, receiving, uh, receiving threat that he is at his age. I expect that based on what we're seeing with Miko Hartman having 46, you'll see them kind of have a 50-50 timeshare in the slot role. Hopefully, Miko Hartman can overtake him um, and take advantage of wanting to expand his uh, abilities within an offense as, you know, one of the major reasons it was cited that we signed him. Um, but yeah, ultimately, you would expect that each of these guys can end up being very efficient in their role just because of what Garrett, War uh, Garrett Wilson is going to force defenses to have to do. And we've seen it immediately last year, right? Basically, 
NFL defense is sold out to kind of stop the passing game at various points, and they dared us to run, and we couldn't run for much of anything because our offensive line was in shambles. We had already lost Brees Hall by then. Signing on James Robinson didn't do anything. Maybe we got him too early, uh, or his running style just didn't click. Uh, and then, of course, as we mentioned, the offensive line being absolutely terrible. Um, so it was very hard to see, but, it, you know, Garrett Wilson still walked away dominating his matchups. Not only was he <laughs> disrespecting a numerous number one cornerbacks around the NFL and making them look silly uh, just based off his release packages, let alone what he was doing in the open field when he got advantages, uh, but the double coverages were coming. You were seeing chips from linebackers and DEs to try to get him off his uh, timing routes, different things of that nature. So all of that, Aaron Rodgers should be able to take much better advantage of than what we saw Zach Wilson, Mike White, um, and uh, why am I forgetting it? our old man Joe Flacco uh, try to do last year. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, it'll be fun to see. With that said, I'm not the biggest. I'm not necessarily in favor of this game plan. I think this is the way we'll need to operate just because we don't have that Corey Davis within our offense as of this moment. Um, and I hate kind of looking at things in a one-dimensional aspect where it's really you have this guy you have to game plan for, everybody else you'll live and die with. Uh, having Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, Michael Carter, uh, you know, definitely helps that out quite a bit. Um, but if we could find a way to definitely shift some of those targets to uh, guys that can take advantage a little bit more. I think overall that'll help the offense. But let me know what you guys think. Should this truly indeed be the Garrett Wilson show and our offense should run through Garrett Wilson as much as possible? Uh, or do we have enough talent to where we should be able to relatively sprinkle things out uh, as necessary? Not necessarily in equal portions, um, but we should be able to get uh, everybody included to a various degree over the course of the season. Either way, uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. I'll catch you again. Peace. Yeah.